big bank take little bank. Y'all know how it go. If y'all ever played that game in school, you know. You walk up to somebody and you tell them, big bank take little bank. That means whatever you got in your pocket and whatever I got in my pocket, whichever one trumps the other, you got to give it up. YouTube, YouTube, and my flair truckers, what's going on? I'm your host, Runaway Child, and I'm back at y'all with another one. If you haven't hit the subscribe button, take the opportunity now, man. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you're already subscribed to the channel, throw a like on this video. A like don't cost you anything to throw on this video, so please show your boy some love. But anyhow, what I got for y'all today is, do you think that it is the depth of the truck stop? With TA being bought out by BP, you got the bigger corporations coming in, and they're pretty much taking over, you know? So everything is kind of cookie cut, you know? It's a line, it's a franchise, it's a chain. You know what I'm saying? It's a chain of, of different truck stops that you're you're accustomed to seeing and, and these are the ones that people are accustomed to going to. They're not accustomed to going to the mom and pops anymore, the smaller truck stops anymore. Um, it just seems like they say, you know, we big on small businesses, small businesses, but it seems like all of the big corporations are putting the small businesses out of service. But I was over looking at this guy's channel, um, Trucker Dave and Red, and uh, he had some pretty precise things to say, you know what I'm saying? And, and I really felt what he was saying. So when you think of truck stops, what do you think? Oh, big trashy places where the employees don't care and there's trash everywhere and nobody cleans anything and truck drivers are an afterthought? Yeah, me too. But it didn't used to be that way. Well, ever since Love took over Speedco, everything else is a Speedco, and it's usually just a bunch of crap. But, on a bright note, I know there's Mexican food over here. So here I am in Fayetteville, North Carolina. And as you come in, you can already see guys are just stacked everywhere. This is supposed to be a pay-to-park, but he doesn't enforce it. And everybody knows it. So this is what happens. As you drive in, the place is just trashed. All of these trucks that are parked here, there's nobody in these trucks. 80% of all these trucks here are empty. So as we come around here, you see cars blocking spots. You see drop trailers. You see more cars. Uh, this, is, this is the way it is here. It's bad. So this is what happens when there's signs inside saying no drop trailers, no pay to park, no this, no that, the other thing. They don't care. They don't enforce it. They're not even concerned. And this is a problem. And the guys that are running the place don't even realize how much of a problem this is. Because they're worried about running off business. But they're already running off business because people aren't stopping because they know there's no place to park. So I found one place right in the middle but I wasn't staying, so I backed up, backed out, and uh, yeah, that was it. One of the things I've noticed over the last 15 to 20 years is this drive and push to turn everything from a truck stop into a travel center. And the travel centers have become literal jokes. They're like 7-Elevens with bigger parking lots. Uh, they want they say they want people to come in, travelers to come in, get their stuff and get out. But they cater more to that side of the store than they do the trucking side of the store. Don't believe me, TA used to be called Truck Stops of America. They changed. Trust me, they're not about the trucks anymore. They, It's a source of income for them, but truthfully, they've really shown their true colors the last few years. Oil Giant BP buying major truck stop chain travel centers. Travel Centers of America is being bought by oil giant BP. Editors note, this story was updated at 4 p.m. ET on February 16th to include additional information. Travel Centers of America, which operates truck stops across the country under the TA brand, is getting bought by BP America. The price of the acquisition is approximately $1.3 billion, or $86 per share. But, oh, that, that's a story for another time. But the independent truck stop kind of didn't get with the times 
were they pushed out of business in some ways? A lot of ways, though, the original owners that have been running them for 35 or 40 years wanted to retire. Their kids don't want to take it over. Pilot comes in or TA or somebody comes in and offers them a deal or a franchise or whatever. And eventually they get their money and they leave. It's just urban sprawl. But, you know, you get out there to L.A. and all the old little truck stops, they're all disappeared. Uh, I used to go to Truck Town in uh, Fontana. That was my place. Great food, great place to go. Uh, you didn't want to park on the back row, though. You'd get robbed or that's where stolen trucks showed up there a lot but a lot of these independents just disappeared you know but through urban expansion and things of that nature they didn't have the money to fight you know the ta in uh san diego disappeared why did it disappear did they hate trucks well maybe down there they did but when you're sitting on 20 acres of prime real estate some developer is going to offer you the right amount of money and you're going to sell they all do but how does this pertain to the independent? Well, the independent just couldn't fight. Or they just wouldn't fight. So they sell out. And then you get what we have now. A bunch of old dumpy little truck stops. Or a bunch of dumpy little truck stops that are getting torn down and replaced by chains. Where am I going in this video? I'm not sure. But I'm just trying to address some questions that I keep seeing pop up on Facebook. Everybody's lamenting the death of the independent. But y'all didn't spend any money there. Well, I'll tell you why. You didn't spend any money there because there was no reason to be there. You know, you could trace a lot of this back and we could talk about deregulation and all that. But when the independents started going away and super trucks started getting these fleets, you know, these super truck fleets, Swift, England, Snyder, Dick Simon, all those from the day, J.B. Hunt, whatever. They started getting massive discounts from the big chains. So that's where these guys went. And you know, a lot of these guys were on such time constraints, they weren't gonna make four or five, six or seven different stops. But one of the downfalls of the um, independent truck stop was they didn't change with the times, which they needed to do. They also, you know, needed to serve the locals better but they also needed to you know hindsight's 2020 and like with the parking and all that there was just so many things they weren't proactive on and then they started cutting corners and like you see you know everywhere and eventually they're out of business so it's it's a hard call there's not one thing you can say that killed the independent truck stop it was just time but it was not keeping up with the times. Keeping these places is very expensive. Truthfully, a truck stop almost wouldn't even need to sell diesel fuel if you had a great store and you had a great restaurant. The locals would be there and the truckers would be there. And as long as you kept the parking lot from getting jammed up and you kept the place up, diesel is just a draw. These guys don't make any money on this. And I'll, and. You know, you see there and you sit there and say, well, yeah, this, that, and the other thing. Well, if you ever look at your discounts on your com data and all that other stuff, you sit there and you compare it to what you're paying cash prices, you're usually just a few cents off. You're getting a discount, but they're jacking the price up to give you the discount down. So basically you're paying what you'd be paying across the street anyways in a lot of cases. They're taking all the space and they're leasing it out and well, you know, I had somebody describe this to me, and I may be wrong, but back when the Flying J was taken over by the pilot, the story was that the Flying J still owned all the buildings, the pilot owned all the fuel, and they leased the restaurants, and something of that nature. But I see that a lot, and uh, I don't, you know, but as time went on, you, you started seeing, you know, everything being taken over by one. Now, if you go into a lot of these uh, big-name truck stops, what you end up seeing is on the board is this is owned by this or this is owned by this. But when you really start looking, it's got a parent company. The parent company, like for instance, is the TA, but then the TA has a franchise that owns the fast food and then they diss that and the other thing and it's a, it's a mess. But now what I'm seeing in TAs and Petros, well in TAs the restaurants are just going away. And then Petros, they're turning into 
uh, IHOPs and I think a Golden Corral here or there. I'm not sure. You know, but for the most part, all the food, you know, it's getting harder to eat out here. Everybody talks about driver health being very important. Well, these places aren't healthy. It's the cheapest crap in the world. There's nothing to eat but cheap crap or crap filled with sugar. And none of it's healthy. It's all deep fried. It's all made in a corner. It's all... There, there's nothing healthy about any of this. They're not interested in driver's health. That's something they say to bring people in. They say, they say a subway is healthy. Well, if you've ever looked at the research, the only way a subway is healthy is if you do like this, this, and this, and there's no vegetables on it. There's no mayonnaise on it. There's no, yeah, it's it's a joke. There I go ranting again. But y'all make sure y'all go over to um, Trucker Dave and Red's channel and check them out and see what he was talking about on, on, on this topic. But um, the depth of the truck stop. That's the name of that's the title of the video, Depth of the Truck Stops. So um I really felt what he was saying, you know, and I really understood it. And I'm quite sure a lot of you guys are understood as uh, will understand exactly what he was saying as well. You know, it's just not the same out here no more. I mean the bigger corporations it seemed like they're taking over everything. It it's just that's just the way it is. I mean, and no no diss to him or nothing like that. I understand. You know what I'm saying? It's just, you know, I think it's uh Little bank take, I mean, big bank take little bank. Y'all know how it go. If y'all ever played that game in school, you know. You walk up to somebody and you tell them, big bank take little bank. That means whatever you got in your pocket and whatever I got in my pocket, whichever one trumps the other, you got to give it up. So that seems like that's what's going on. These big corporations walk around saying, big bank take little bank, you know. So, but y'all let me know what y'all think, man. Hit me in the comment section. I'm going to leave the description in the, uh, I mean, I'm going to leave the link in the description box. And um, y'all let me know. What do y'all think? Do y'all think that this is the depth of the truck stops? Or do y'all think it's just a fad or a phase that we're going through? I mean, I don't know. Y'all let me know. Anyway, till next time, Runaway Child. And we are...